In 2019, Margaret and Teddy Sullivan made a dramatic life change. They decided to take a family gap year. They quit their jobs, gave up their apartment in New York City, and took their two young kids out of school to travel the world. They visited 29 countries spanning six continents. And Margaret shares their adventures, tips, and takeaways. It's a new book. It's called Following the Sun, Tales and Fails from a Year Around the World with Our Kids. And Margaret joins us live now. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Well, where are you talking to us from right now? Oh gosh, this looks like uh, Indonesia, but don't be fooled. I'm at a baseball tournament in New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> Still mom life for sure. So how did you, my question is, how did you do this? How did you decide to do this? And then for you and your husband to be like, we can actually make this feasible and go for it. Yeah, this caught us totally by surprise. Taking a family gap year. I mean, I'd never heard the term before we decided to do it. But, you know, life was good. Things were humming along. And then I went on a work trip and I had what can only be called an epiphany, an aha moment where I just thought, you know, the world is so big. Time is short. Our kids are young, but they're not going to stay that way. What if we just paused everything and took one year and had an adventure together while we still had the chance? And I came home and I pitched that idea to my husband. <laughs> and I, I still laugh at the blank stare on his face <laughs> when I had this idea. But it took about a year for us to kind of work up the courage and realize, actually, we're more mobile than we think. And once we decided to say yes, it was about eight months of logistics, and then we were off. Right, because, I mean, so many people fantasize about doing exactly what you did. Just, like, let me leave my job. But what about the logistics? How were you able to make that work with your jobs and, of course, with money? And kids' school, too. Oh, gosh, I know. Well, you know what kept us sane was... This spending, if you talk about a budget, this is a finite plan. You do this, this can look like five, five family members in a camper van exploring one section of the US, or it can look like an around the world trip like we did. And we've heard of people doing it even grander than that. So it can look very different. The real important thing is that it's the time together with family. So if, even if you are just taking a pause and just staying home and saying, we're gonna spend a year exploring our own town, or you know we homeschooled, we're gonna homeschool for a year and really get to know our kids and their learning style. It's gonna look different for every family, but it's not impossible. So I would resist the urge to say, oh, we could never do something like this, because you might be able to. You talked about the look on your husband's face. What, how'd your kids react when you told them, we're headed out, we're going? It's one of the benefits of traveling with small kids is they were psyched. This meant a year <laughs> with just mommy and daddy, and that's all they want in the world at that age. They were four and six years old, and you know this meant they were taken out of school and they could be with us around the clock. There are advantages and disadvantages to traveling with kids that young, but this was definitely one of the advantages. How did the family get along? I mean, any family um, traveling or at home are going to have some, some tough times, we'll say. You know, it was not easy at first. My husband and I weren't used to being the full-time caregivers, and we had some getting used to to do. There was whining and schlepping and, of course, all of that. But once we got on the kids' level and had a bit of a reset, like, let's this is a kid's adventure as much as it is a grown-up's adventure, we, we started to see the world through their eyes. We slowed down a little bit. We said, all right, we don't have to do all the tours and all the things that we wanted to do. And then it got really fun. And by the way, kids have a lot to teach grownups. It turns out we're not the all-knowing, in charge, invincible ones. They're brave and funny, and we realize we have just as much to learn from them as they have to learn from us. And we kind of came home with that mutual respect, which was fantastic. So I'm sure everyone had different spots that was their favorite, but family consensus, what was the best location that you guys were at? Oh, man, we get asked this a lot, and it's very difficult, but we really did come to love Brazil. We loved South Africa and Japan, I would say. Those were among our top three, um, but it does not mean they were the most special. Or I mean, there were a million criteria you could follow for coolest place right. that we went. And I imagine you write about the, some of the biggest challenges while doing this. Uh, what, were, you know, what, was, what was your single biggest challenge, you'd say, for this trip? I think single biggest was finding that balance between this obligation to see all the sites and you know, we came all this way, we're in China, we've got to see the Great Wall, we've got to do this, 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 and this, and then trying to strike the balance of just being wandering foreigners in an unfamiliar place and discovering foods and making friends and just going off the beaten path and discovering, oh, like we can actually learn as much from this playground or market that we would from that three hour walking tour with the guide. And actually with kids, you're more likely to have 
a far more positive experience when you're doing that more local, slow, wandering kind of travel than the go, 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 sightseeing, touring, box checking. And we finally found that balance, but it took a while. That was really hard. And right. I noticed quickly that uh, just your part of your title is tails and fails. So there were ups and downs with this that people have to be ready to fail at this if they do embark on this journey with their family. Definitely. I mean, you have to be compatible with your partner. I will say that because mm. we learn to let things roll off and one person messed up, forgot the tickets, forgot the whatever. We have to be able to be flexible and forgiving with the other person. That was really important. I mean, all the mishaps and mistakes. Uh, you know, there was a lice infestation in Berlin. My son fell off a dock in Indonesia. Oh where got a stomach bug in Beijing. It just, you have to be able to roll with it. And we learned to be a far more flexible family. Absolutely fascinating adventure. Uh, again, let's show the book information here. It is called Following the Sun, Tales and Fails from a Year Around the World with Our Kids. You can check out the website right there on your screen. Also, their uh, handles on uh, social media. Really appreciate you joining us. Thanks so much and good luck. Thanks, Margaret. Thanks so much.